Arsenal nil, Aston Villa two. West Ham did it in December. Now Villa have done it and they have won at the Emirates. And over the balance of play, Stevie Nicol, they deserved all three points, didn't they, Unai Emery's men? Yeah, I think at the at the end of the day, when you, you look at the big picture, um, particularly the second half, uh, mm -hmm. then they did. You know, I think, I think there's no question that Arsenal in the first half had the upper hand. Uh, certainly the, the Trossard goal is, is, is probably the biggest talking point uh, in that first half. If Trossard puts that ball home instead of Martinez making a save with his foot, then things could have been different. But Villa defended well. They did look pretty good on the break as well. Uh, but second half, I'm not sure whether I praise Villa, whether I ask questions of Arsenal. You know, as far as, as Villa, the way they moved the ball around, the way they looked composed, uh, they kept the ball away from Arsenal. Uh, and the two goals were, were, were superbly taken. Uh, as far as Arsenal's concerned, you got to ask yourself where that where that where was that urgency and that desire in the second half because they they almost looked as though they were standing off. But as I said, you got to give praise to Villa the way they passed the ball around. Maybe that's the reason why Villa, uh, Arsenal couldn't get a hold of the ball uh, in the second period. Mm, it was a masterclass tactically from Unai Emery, and now it's Manchester City with a two-point lead at the top after defeats at home today for Liverpool and Arsenal. Winning the title isn't easy, is it? He says to the man with five of them. <laughs> no, you, you, you know, when we talk about... Uh, 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 we talk about winning a championship. A league championship is about longevity and consistency. And that's why Manchester City have won three in a trot. Because, yes, even they have had some ups and downs over the last three years, but they get it right when it matters most. And I think what you saw today are two teams in, in Arsenal and Liverpool who are not not 100% sure how to finish the job off. But you saw a City say yesterday who know exactly how to finish it off. So I think we're looking at experience here. Uh, no question, Arsenal will be asking themselves some big questions how they blew it, but at the same time, as I already said, Aston Villa were fantastic. Yeah, they were. I, I want to ask you the same question I asked you earlier when we spoke about the Liverpool game and the reasons why Liverpool couldn't get the job done against Palace. Was there one reason above any others today that Arsenal couldn't get the job done against Villa at home? Well, if, if you just look at the second half in isolation, then mm -hmm. you would suggest that Arsenal looked a little... Jaded, you know, I was talking about there didn't seem to be that urgency and that desire. And generally when that happens, it's it's about just a little bit of tiredness. But then Aston Villa played in the in the Europa League midweek. Yeah, Thursday, yes. Arsenal had more rest time than Aston Villa. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Aston Villa was sharp and they closed the ball quicker. They most of the 50-50s they won, they got to the ball first. All of those things that take some juice in your legs, Villa had, that Arsenal didn't. So it's very difficult to point the finger and say that Arsenal had a lot of games and a lot of the a lot of the legs were taken out of them by the, the Champions League game midweek because that doesn't fly because of Villa's performance in the Europa League and having less time to recover. So it's a, it's a head scratcher, there's no question, but... For Arteta, he's got to figure it out quickly. There's only six games left, and he's got to figure out what went wrong, particularly in that, that second half. Well, putting the ball in the back of the net is one of the things that they didn't do today. Look, the way well, that I they've think, been playing. I think, and Mark, I think the worrying thing is, you know, we, we spoke about Liverpool earlier. And mm -hmm. in terms of performance, Liverpool were awful. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, they had four or five opportunities where they yeah, should they have scored. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't say that about this this performance no. from Arsenal. You know, at times they passed the ball well, but there was no penetration and they came up against, again, got to give Billy credit, some stubborn defending and some good defending. But they didn't really create, you know, and the, and the reason the Trossard one's important is because if they take that or Trossard takes it, it changes the complexion. It means that, that Villa have to open up and leave more space and Arsenal... For, for the majority of the season and, and, and last season as well, took, took, have taken advantage of teams giving them space. But the fact that Trossard never scored that opportunity 
and the fact that they really didn't create any other chances where you would turn around and say the the coulda, woulda, and shoulda, then we get what we get in that second period. Yeah, and it's easy to identify individual opportunities. And of course, Trossard probably should have scored that. Yeah. But Ollie Watkins hit the post after a bit of captain chaos defending mm -hmm. when Gabriel slammed the ball against Zinchenko 60 seconds before that. It was like a, it was a three-minute spell where Watkins hits the post, Trossard misses when he should have scored, yeah. and Saka puts it, it just wide. But I didn't see the chances I expected from that game, certainly from an Arsenal perspective, because yeah. Villa's game plan was perfect. How surprising was that for you that they just looked a little bit insipid, a bit deflated, a bit tired today? Yeah, I think I think again we should give a lot of credit to, to Villa. Of course. You know, the, the defending that Villa did in the first half, in terms of on the edge of the box, um, you know, you can give Arsenal credit for for a back middle to get into the front in the first half, they, they did that pretty well. But you've got to give credit to Villa's defending. You know, it was a real wall. It was a real rock. And they, other than the Trost had one, they virtually gave nothing mm -hmm. to Arsenal. So a little bit of both, a little bit of, a little bit of Arsenal not managing to, to try and open the door. But of course, credit to Villa for keeping that door well and well and truly firmly shot, and then taking advantage of some great play. You know, we, we should talk about Telemans as well. You know, Telemans hitting the, hitting the, the crossbar and the post mm. at the mm. same time. And then, of course, you've got Watkins' two goals. I mean, mm. the second half really was um, a fantastic performance from Aston Villa. They were composed. Yeah. They passed it around. And again, rather than point the finger at Arsenal and say that they may have retired, how, how about get the ball off a team that, that keep it so well and keep it yeah. moving? Yeah, pole position now for the fourth place in Champions League now, Villa, with a three-point lead over Spurs. I'm glad you mentioned the second half. I've got three notes for the second half. You mentioned one of them. Tielemans heading the bar in the post. Again, what's Zinchenko doing? Just clear the ball. Don't try and be smart and nutmeg players. And then the two goals in the 84th and the 87th minute. I don't really have any chances for Arsenal, and you've always got that threat, haven't you, if you're Aston Villa, when you've got Ollie Watkins, whether it's John McGinn. I thought the whole spine of the team today, mm. from Watkins, who got the goal, Leon Bailey, who came on for Diaby at the back, Diego Carlos was outstanding, John McGinn in the middle of the park. It's the yeah. type of fixture you can't afford to have any passengers. Villa didn't today, did they? No, and the, I think the fact in the second half, when, when they frustrated Arsenal, and mm. Arsenal were maybe try to push some players forward um, and leaving some holes. Uh, then Villa took advantage of it. I've got, I've got to say, I didn't I didn't think Bailey was going to put that in with his weaker right foot because <laughs> he's all left, so I didn't fancy him. <laughs> but he, he was composed enough and got a good strike on it. And then, of course, Watkins with the, with the second one. Everybody pushing forward for Arsenal. Um, I mean, it smacked of... We'd, we'd be as well losing two nils, one nil, uh, mm -hmm. and they got, and they actually got what they, what they wished for. Uh, but it's a great finish, composed. Uh, Smith Rose closing them down. Raya's come out, and it's a beautiful little dink. Maybe a little touch off Smith Rose, but it was going in it anyway. Uh, so yeah, the I think just the way the second half went, it, it, it suited Aston Villa, and it certainly suited Ollie Watkins. I mean, when he's in this sort of form, he's a real terror. Uh, Saliba and Gabriel had no idea where he was half the time. Uh, just, a, just a clever player, a smart player. And as we saw in the, the second goal, the composure to finish. Um, pushing for an England place, no question. OK, for you personally, as a Liverpool fan and former player, I, I wanted to keep you away from sharp objects earlier. Uh, that, was, that was a tough one against Palace. So what's that Arsenal-Villa result done to your mood as far as hope an expectation and perhaps and maybes. Where are you now? Um, well, there's no question that Arsenal losing today has sort of bumped Liverpool back into it um, because I couldn't see Arsenal losing twice mm. before kick-off today against Villa and the end of the season. And so that was why earlier on in the day I figured Liverpool, Liverpool's just out it now because of the goal difference not just because it was three points, because of the goal difference. But 
But Liverpool are back in it. Now, the fact is that Liverpool have got three away games to come. Fulham, Everton, West Ham. Which on paper you would suggest, certainly before today, big favourites to win them. But then when you lose at home to Crystal Palace at Anfield and you're going for the title, then you really you really can't turn around and say that you're confident that they're going to go and win those three away games on the trot. Mm. So it puts them back in it, but they're still, well, the third favourites now. After today, they are third favourites. No question, the favourites are Man City. Been there, done it, seen it, been in this position before. Uh, you expect them to to go on from here uh, and Arsenal will be ruined the, the fact that they've, they've now put it in somebody else's hands when it was in theirs. Almost what? An hour and a half ago. Yeah. So, yeah, Teddy favourites, Arsenal saying favourites, Liverpool back in it, but still third favourites. OK, final question. City, odds on favourites, clearly. They've been there, they've done it, they're going for four in a row. They've got six games left to play. I'm going to read these six games to you because Liverpool and Arsenal need a favour. They need to win all their games and they need a favour from one of these six teams. So who's it going to be? Brighton, Forest, Wolves, Fulham, Spurs and then West Ham on the final day. That's Man City's last six games. Who's most likely to do Arsenal and Liverpool a favour against City? You know, I can't pick one of them. I can all sincerity, I can't I can't pick one of them. Um Spurs? Because they'll have a say they've still got to play Arsenal as well. Did you watch Spurs yesterday? <laughs> yeah, true, fair point. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, honestly, honestly, it was it's it's about as difficult to see them dropping points against those sides as it as it was difficult to see Liverpool losing to Palace and Arsenal losing to Villa. Nobody saw them coming. This stage of the season is very difficult to predict. Um, and I honestly can't pull one out and see it's going to be harder or easier because it's football. The game's not played on paper. You've got to play it on the grass when the whistle blows. Uh, and that's why it's very, very difficult to figure out, actually, most of the time what's going to happen next. 